Welcome inside with the insiders alongside Mike Garofolo and Judy Batista. I am Tom Pellicero. We have a loaded show for you today, just five days out from the final Sunday of the NFL regular season. A lot of teams with things at stake, 20 in all, still alive in some capacity to make the playoffs. One of them, the Saints, their tight end, Juwan Johnson, is going to join the show. Tell us how in the world he made that fingertip somersaulting catch that helped propel New Orleans last week. We will preview a bunch of the big games with a lot on the line coming up this weekend. Of course, the Bills-Dolphins matchup in the final game of the season. A lot on the line in the Packers-Bears matchup. A lot on the line, a playoff berth specifically in the Texans matchup against the Colts. But let's start right now with what we already know in the AFC playoff picture. Take a look right here. The Ravens have wrapped up the number one seed, the lone first round by and home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. We know that the Chiefs have won the AFC West. The Dolphins have clinched a playoff spot, but again, they've not yet wrapped up the division. The Browns also are in the playoffs and still a whole lot that can still happen from there. Let's bring in our friend Sherry Burris to the conversation as well. Judy, I want to start out with you here. The Ravens clinching that number one seed. It certainly seems like between the way Lamar is playing, the way some of those young playmakers are played around him, if we have a clear team to beat, it's probably the one in Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, take it from John Harbaugh, who after the game called it pretty much a well-rounded, perfect performance. He said he could not recall seeing a better performance in the game. And what struck me watching it was um, they had everything working, right? I mean, they got a big return on special teams. The defense uh, was holding that explosive Miami Dolphins offense in check. And then on offense, of course, Lamar was practically perfect. Five touchdown passes. He only had three incompletions. And then another thing Harbaugh noted after the game was they had been talking about if we could just start hitting these deep shots, that would be a backbreaker. Well, they were hitting the big plays. Um, they had pass plays at 75 yards, 35 yards, 33, 25, 23, on and on and on it went. Um, and really, at the end, what made this performance, I think, so impressive was it was coming on a short week after they had beaten up on the San Francisco 49ers, flown back across the country to get home, and then they had to take on another 11-win team. This team is beating good opponents. Sherry, they're 7-1 and one against teams that come into these games with a winning record, and they are doing it in dominating fashion. Yeah, you really think about that, Judy. It's kind of head-scratching the losses they had earlier this season. But this is the time now to be clicking on all cylinders. They beat the 49ers' best team in the NFC. They put a walloping on the Dolphins on Sunday, scoring the most points that we've seen in that Week 17. And there's a really great clip from the Ravens' social media team of their celebration in the locker room. First off, Harbaugh's dancing like Ted Lasso, so that is an immediate one uh, a point from that but also Odell Beckham Jr. saying he thinks this is the best team he's ever been on which has a lot of weight he says you know the defense is playing so well they're going to have to go through the bank saying M&T Bank Stadium with the home field advantage also they were wearing that purple and black combo they are 4-0 I read in a CBS article uh, Mike when they are rocking that gear so everything is seemingly working for them in Baltimore these days. You know, statistically, Lamar Jackson, who is likely going to win the MVP award, statistically, his stats from his previous MVP season were way better than what you're looking at right now. But when you look at Lamar Jackson and you look at this offense, I don't think anyone right now is saying, well, this is the kind of football that's not going to hold up in January because he's got the highest completion percentage of his career. He's got the lowest interception rate of his career, actually tied with his previous MVP season. Yards per attempt, which... The coaches love that stat is as high as it's ever been. The way the entire offense is running with that top-ranked running game, this is not the team that you go, well, he's going to hold up. He's a scrambling. Coach. Yeah, he's doing a lot with his legs. He's always going to do a lot with his legs, but he's doing a lot with his legs to create it for his arm as well, Tom. And the thing is running as well as we have seen this Baltimore offense run. I think this team is prepared for January, potentially February football, more than I have ever seen them. We know the one seed, all right? Baltimore's got everything wrapped up. San Francisco and the NFC's got everything wrapped up. A lot of these other teams have a lot of complicated scenarios. We'll take you through all of them on this episode of The Insiders, starting out here with the Steelers. Okay, they get into the playoffs with a win at Baltimore, which, remember, does not have anything to play for, or in a loss by either Jacksonville at Tennessee or Buffalo 
at Miami. They also would get in if the Jaguars lose, the Broncos beat the Raiders, and Colts-Texans does not end in a tie. That's something with strength of schedule or something. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. I don't know what it's about. Uh, <laughs> Sherry, tell me about the Steelers right now. They've obviously been a team with quarterback transition throughout this entire year. Pretty apparent at this point. Mike Tomlin sticking with a healthy Mason Rudolph over a healthy Kenny Pickett. Why? Yeah, well, that just says a lot. The fact that a guy like Mike Tomlin is still believing in Mason Rudolph, even Cam Hayward following their last game, he had his shirt, the Believe Ted Lasso, right? Because Cam Hayward said, we believe in him. We believe in this offense. They're putting up averaging 32 points with Mason Rudolph in his last two starts. And Tomlin said the reason he's going with Rudolph is because of the way the offense is putting up the points. They haven't seen it that way. And with the urgency, with kind of those different contingencies, you said, for making the playoffs, needing to get this win over Baltimore, that they're still putting the ball in his hands. So, again, Mike Tomlin, Judy, believing just like Cam Hayward uh, in Mason Rudolph. I think it's pretty obvious that the playmakers on the team believe in Mason Rudolph. There were some pretty obvious signs of discontent from some members of the offense earlier in the season. And I think Mason Rudolph's ability to get the ball in their hands, especially George Pickens, to get him going in these last two games, has really given the offense confidence that he's the guy that can do it. Now, maybe this would have happened if Kenny Pickett were healthy and he were in the game. But they are playing their best offensive football right now. And that has everybody believing that Mason Rudolph is the guy. Judy, Kenny Pickett today shooting down reports or, or a report. I didn't even see it, to be honest with you, saying that he refused <laughs> to be the backup last week. That is not true from what he said. That's not true from what I was told either. So I don't even know uh, where that could be coming from. But I will say this, uh, the Steelers and Mike Tomlin, the way that Tomlin approaches things, he doesn't care about, well, are we going to lose Kenny Pickett for good? Like if we have Mason Rudolph as the starter? Are we benching Pickett? Are we giving up? on Like, they started Mason Rudolph periodically throughout his tenure. Mike Tomlin is just looking at it. What's the best decision for our football team right now? We'll get Kenny Pickett potentially back as our starting quarterback, whether it could be in the offseason, uh, potentially as a training camp competition. Like, he doesn't care. He's not worried about that. It's all about what is best for the team right now. They're not giving up on Kenny Pickett by any stretch of the imagination. Perhaps he will be the team's franchise quarterback and starter week one next year. It ain't about that right now. It is about what's in front of them right now, and that is Mason Rudolph in the hot hand.